From an inexperienced rookie to a two-time world champion, Alonso has permanently engraved his name into the sport. At the age of 41, Alonso is by no means slowing down in his performance. Determined to show the world his worth, the Spaniard is working hard to place his team among the top teams. From 7th position to a leading 2nd position in the Constructors' Championship, Alonso is proving that he's got what it takes to still be considered as one of the greatest drivers in the sport. So stay tuned as we get to know who this driver is. Karting Days Alonso was born in Asturias, Spain, and from the tender age of 3, he started karting. How did this happen? Well, his father, José Luis Alonso, was an amateur kart driver and interested in sharing his interests with his children. He built a go-kart for Alonso's elder sister, Lorena. However, Lorena didn't share his interests, hence the kart was passed on to Alonso. And at just three years of age, Alonso received the go-kart, which his father had modified for his small size. Unfortunately, the Spaniard was not born to wealthy parents, so his racing experience took a big hit. Despite not being able to provide for his young racing career, his parents were very supportive and stood by him in all the ways they could. They couldn't afford rain tyres, hence young Fernando had to adapt to wet track on slick tyres, but his mother, Ana Diaz, sewed his racing clothes and ensured they fit him as he grew older. His father, on the other hand, took on the huge role of his mechanic, counsellor, manager and accountant. His education was also given ultimate priority. At the young age of seven, efforts paid off when Alonso had a taste of victory, winning his first kart race in Pola de la Vania. He went on to win the Children's Junior Championship of Asturias and Galicia in 1988 and 1989 respectively, before moving up to the cadet class in 1990. Alonso's talent caught the eye of Henis Marco, a go-kart importer who took him under his wing and provided financial support to Alonso's family, allowing him to participate in the European karting series. Under Marco's mentorship, Alonso learned the importance of being conservative and maintaining the condition of a kart. After winning the 1990 Asturias and Basque Country Cadet Championships and finishing second in the 1991 Spanish Cadet National Championship, Alonso was allowed to enter the 100cc class by the local karting federation, as he was deemed underage to drive more powerful machinery. Alonso's success continued as he won three consecutive Spanish Junior National Championships from 93 to 95, allowing him to progress to the World Championships. In 1995, he finished third at the Commission Internationale de Karting Cadets Rainbow Trophy. To earn some money, Alonso worked as a mechanic for younger kart drivers while continuing to hone his skills on the track. The following year, Alonso had a stellar year as he won his fourth Spanish Junior Karting Championship, the Trofeo Estival, the Marlborough Masters and the Five Continent Juniors Cup at Karting Genk. He continued his success in 1997, taking the Italian and Spanish International A Championships, finishing second in the European Championship with nine wins and winning the Masters Karting Paris Bercy and the Spanish Karting Championship. Pre-F1 Racing Career At the age of 17, Alonso stepped into the world of car racing by making his debut in the 1999 Euro Open with Campos Motorsport. He was able to clinch the championship title from Manuel Giao in the final race of the season, having secured six wins and nine pole positions throughout the season. And in 2000, Alonso moved up to the more prestigious International Formula 3000 Championship, joining Team Astro Mega, which was backed by the Formula 1 team Minardi. Alonso had initially secured sponsorship from driver Robert Lechner, but the agreement fell through, allowing him to secure his place in the team. The Spaniard finished in second place at the Hungaring and won the final race of the season at the Circuit de Spa Francochamps, earning him a total of 17 points and securing fourth place overall in the championship. Formula One career, Minardi and Renault days. Back in December 1999, as part of the Euro Open by Nissan's agreement to give its champion a chance to test at an advanced level, sports director Cesare Fiorio put Alonso to the test in a Formula 1 car at the Circuito de Jerez. Although he was Minardi's test and reserve driver in 2000, Alonso joined the team's race team in 2001. During his debut season, Alonso didn't have much success in a non-competitive car, only managing a 10th position in the German Grand Prix and ending the season with no points for 23rd overall. However, the following year, he signed on as Renault's test driver under the instructions of manager Flavio Briatori to get familiar with the team and enhance his skills for the future. 
As part of his role, Alonso worked with the engineering department to enhance Giancarlo Fisichella and Jensen Button's performance and participated in testing sessions across Spain and the United Kingdom. And by 2003, Alonso had made his way up to Renault's race team, breaking records along the way. He became the youngest driver then to clinch a pole position at the Malaysian race, and later that year, he broke Bruce McLaren's record as the then youngest F1 race winner at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Throughout the 2003 season, the Spanish driver managed to earn four podium finishes, ending the year with 55 points and a sixth place finish in the World Drivers' Championship. After a successful 2003 season, Alonso remained with Renault for the 2004 season. He began the year with a strong performance at the season opening Australian Grand Prix, finishing in third place. Throughout the year, Alonso managed to earn three more podium finishes, including a pole position for the French Grand Prix. Despite not achieving any race victories that season, Alonso finished fourth in the World Drivers' Championship with 59 points, an improvement from the previous year. Undeterred, Alonso stayed with Renault for the 2005 season. Due to changes in regulations, forcing teams not to switch tyres during a race and engines had to be used for two races before they could be swapped, he found himself in a heated battle with McLaren driver Kimi Raikkonen for the World Championship. Although Alonso's car was more reliable than Raikkonen's, it lacked speed. However, Alonso's skill and determination helped him to eclipse Emerson Fittipaldi as the youngest world driver's champion. He won seven victories, six pole positions, and 14 podium finishes throughout the season, ending with a total of 133 points. Signing a contract extension with Renault for the 2006 season, bookmakers favoured Alonso to retain the Drivers' Championship, with his primary competition coming from Ferrari driver Michael Schumacher. The 2006 season began with Alonso winning six out of the first nine races and finishing no lower than second. He held a commanding lead in the championship with 84 out of a possible 90 points, showcasing his incredible driving abilities. However, an FIA ban on Renault's tuned mass damper device was imposed to slow Alonso down, and Schumacher's Ferrari underwent significant development to improve competitiveness. This saw the two drivers tied on points, entering the season's penultimate round, the Japanese Grand Prix. Despite the pressure, Alonso remained cool-headed and won the race, while Schumacher retired due to an engine failure while leading. With just one point needed to secure his second championship, Alonso finished second at the season-ending Brazilian Grand Prix. As a result, he became Formula 1's youngest double world champion at that point, cementing his status as one of the greatest drivers in the sport's history. McLaren Days In 2007, Alonso joined the McLaren team, after a secret meeting with team owner Ron Dennis in Japan, where they agreed on a three-year contract starting in 2007. However, Alonso's contract with Renault didn't expire until the end of that year, and he was not released early due to sponsorship reasons. He was allowed to make his first appearance for McLaren in a test session in November 2006 at the Circuito de Jerez. Alonso's main rivals in the 2007 season were his teammate Lewis Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen of Ferrari. Alonso won four Grand Prix races in Malaysia, Monaco, Europe and Italy and was leading the championship until Hamilton overtook him. At the Brazilian Grand Prix, the final round of the season, Alonso needed to win the race and have his teammate finish third or lower to win his third championship. However, he finished third and his tie with Hamilton was broken based on count back, with Hamilton finishing second more frequently than Alonso. The 2007 season was marred by a number of incidents involving Alonso and his teammate Hamilton, including the infamous espionage scandal and a contentious situation during qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix when Hamilton disobeyed a team instruction, leading to Alonso deliberately delaying Hamilton in the pit lane as retaliation. These tensions eventually led to Alonso and McLaren mutually agreeing to terminate their contract in November 2007. As part of the agreement, Alonso wasn't allowed to join any team that McLaren deemed to be their primary challenger for the 2008 season. This restriction ultimately led to Alonso signing with Renault for the 2008 season, reuniting him with the team that had brought him his two championship titles. Second stint with Renault Unfortunately, at the start of this season, Alonso's car lacked power due to a moratorium in development. As a result, he only scored nine points in the first seven races. However, his luck changed when the car received some much-needed aerodynamic development and this allowed him to improve his performance and win in Singapore and Japan. 
Regrettably, the win in Singapore was marred by controversy when Renault ordered his teammate, Nelson Piquet Jr., to deliberately crash and trigger the safety car. This event, later known as Crashgate, caused a scandal in the racing world. Despite the controversy, Alonso continued to perform well, and by the end of the season, Alonso had scored a total of 61 points, which placed him fifth in the Drivers' Championship. His 2009 season with Renault wasn't so remarkable due to the uncompetitive nature of the car and he failed to record a win for the first time since 2005. Ferrari Days In 2009, Alonso agreed with Ferrari's president, Luca Cordero di Montesamolo, to drive for the team. However, team principal John Tott decided to extend the contracts of both Raikkonen and Felipe Massa to 2010. Alonso was able to secure a mid-2009 agreement to drive for Ferrari starting in 2011, but this was later moved forward to 2010 when Renault was investigated for race fixing in Singapore and Raikkonen was let go. Throughout the 2010 season, Alonso faced tough competition from McLaren's Hamilton and Button as well as Red Bull's Vettel and Webber. Despite facing a 47-point deficit mid-season due to errors, Alonso managed to win five races and enter the season-ending Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, leading by eight points. However, he finished as the runner-up to Vettel after losing 19 points in the race due to a seventh-place finish, missing the championship by four points. The following year, Alonso's 2011 season was a mixed bag. His car lacked aerodynamic grip and tyre handling during qualifying, but he was able to extract additional pace to secure 10 podium finishes and win the British Grand Prix, capitalising on a strategy error from Red Bull. Although his best qualification of the year was a second at the Canadian Grand Prix, he outqualified his teammate Massa on 15 occasions throughout the season. Despite a series of strong finishes that kept him in contention to finish second to eventual champion Vettel, Weber's win in the season-ending Brazilian Grand Prix meant that Alonso finished fourth overall with 257 points. In preparation for the 2012 season, Alonso extended his contract with Ferrari until 2016. His main rival for the championship that year was Vettel. Alonso won races in Malaysia, Valencia and Germany, and consistent finishes in the points permitted him to maintain a 40-point lead in the Drivers' Championship. However, collisions at the start of the races, a mechanical failure, and an improved performance from Vettel meant that Alonso's points lead disappeared. Going into the final race of the season, the Brazilian Grand Prix, Alonso trailed Vettel by 13 points and needed to finish third, while Vettel scored no points to win the championship. Alonso finished second, while Vettel finished fourth, securing his third championship and leaving Alonso as runner-up for the second time in his career with 278 points, missing the championship by just three points this time around. At the beginning of the 2013 season, Alonso drove an aggressively designed car, which allowed him to win races in China and Spain and consistently score points. However, he was slower than Vettel after a change of tyre compound at the German Grand Prix and front and rear bodywork components, intended to improve his car's performance, proved to be ineffective. And with 242 points, Alonso finished as a runner-up for the third time in his career. Consequently, his relationship with Ferrari cooled due to his belief that the team was unable to construct a championship-winning car. In 2014, Alonso failed to win any races due to his car being less powerful than the championship-winning Mercedes. However, he managed to take third place in the Chinese Grand Prix and second place in the Hungarian Grand Prix. Despite qualifying faster than his teammate Raikkonen on 16 occasions, with an average of more than half a second per lap in 2014, Alonso finished sixth in the Drivers' Championship with 161 points. Back with McLaren in 2014, Alonso and team principal, Marco Mattiacci, had severe disagreements that resulted in Alonso leaving Ferrari after negotiations for a new contract fell through. Following this, he returned to McLaren on a three-year contract from 2015 to 2017, which didn't include any opt-out clauses. However, his return to the team was not without difficulties. During a pre-season test session at the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya in February 2015, Alonso suffered an accident that left him with a concussion. As a result, reserve driver Kevin Magnussen replaced him for the season opening Australian Grand Prix. Despite returning to the team later that season, Alonso faced a challenging time. His car's Honda engine was underpowered, making it difficult for him to keep up with the competition and stay ahead of the pack. 
Throughout the season, Alonso was only able to score points twice, finishing in 10th place at the British Grand Prix and 5th place at the Hungarian Grand Prix. This left him in 17th place in the Drivers' Championship with just 11 points. His dissatisfaction with the car's slow pace became evident through multiple radio complaints that year. Despite facing reliability issues and having a non-competitive car, Alonso decided to continue with McLaren for the 2016 season. However, his season was not without setbacks. Alonso suffered injuries in a heavy crash with Esteban Gutierrez at the season opening Australian Grand Prix, which caused him to miss the Bahrain Grand Prix on medical grounds. He was replaced by reserve driver Stoffel van Dorn for that race. Despite this, Alonso still managed to outqualify his teammate Jensen Button 15 times throughout the season and scored points in nine races. He achieved two fifth-place finishes at the Monaco Grand Prix and the United States Grand Prix, finishing the season in 10th place in the Drivers' Championship with a total of 54 points. Alonso remained with McLaren for the 2017 season, but once again faced reliability issues that affected his performance, particularly during the early rounds. His best finish that season was sixth place in the Hungarian Grand Prix. Although he managed to achieve three consecutive top 10 finishes, Alonso finished the season in 15th place in the Drivers' Championship with just 17 points. After contract negotiations with McLaren CEO Zach Brown, Alonso signed a multi-year extension with the team on the 19th of October 2017. He had a decent start to the 2018 season, finishing a fifth place at the season opening Australian Grand Prix and achieving nine top 10 finishes overall. Alonso consistently outqualified his teammate Stoffel van Dorn at every race and drove with great skill and aggression. However, as the season progressed, Alonso became increasingly frustrated with certain drivers and with McLaren's decision to focus on their 2019 car rather than continuing to develop their 2018 car. By the end of the 2018 season, Alonso had earned a total of 50 points, placing him in 11th place in the Drivers' Championship. He ultimately decided to leave Formula 1 as a driver, citing his dissatisfaction with the predictability of the results and his belief that discussions away from racing, such as those concerning the broadcast of radio transmissions and controversies, were harming the sport. He did, however, remain with McLaren as a brand ambassador, offering advice and support to other drivers and taking part in select test sessions to help develop the team's cars. His contract, however, expired at the end of 2019 and wasn't renewed for 2020. Alpine Era Alonso returned to Formula 1 in 2021 as a driver for Alpine F1 team, formerly known as Renault. He partnered with Esteban Ocon for the season, and to prepare for his comeback, Alonso participated in four testing days driving the Renault RS18, and was the fastest driver in the young driver's test driving the Renault RS20. Unfortunately, Alonso was forced to retire from his first race back, the 2021 Bahrain Grand Prix, due to plastic debris entering his brake duct. However, he finished in 11th place at the 2021 Emilia Romagna Grand Prix and was upgraded to 10th after a penalty was given to Kimi Raikkonen, earning his first points of the season. During the Hungarian Grand Prix, Alonso led the race for a while before eventually falling to 4th place after a pit stop ahead of Lewis Hamilton. His defensive driving against Hamilton helped teammate Ocon secure his first ever race victory. In August 2021, Alonso exercised an option to extend his contract with Alpine for the 2022 season. In the latter half of the 2021 season, Alonso consistently scored points with finishes of 6 in the Netherlands, 8th in Italy and 6 in Russia, despite being forced to pit in wet conditions. And at the 2021 Qatar Grand Prix, he secured his first podium finish since 2014, finishing in third place. Alonso continued with Alpine for the 2022 season, closing the season in fourth place for the championship. Aston Martin Reign Then, for the 2023 season, the Spaniard made a decision that was quite surprising to the racing world by deciding to sign a contract with Aston Martin alongside Lance Stroll, replacing retiring Sebastian Vettel. Since Alpine finished 4th place in the championship and Aston Martin finished 7th position, this move was unexpected. However, Alonso's performance this season has been nothing short of remarkable. His debut for Aston Martin at the 2023 Bahrain Grand Prix was impressive as he finished in 3rd place, securing a podium finish. And despite serving a penalty due to his car being off position at the starting grid, he maintained his strong form at the following race, the 2023 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, where he finished in third place again, marking his 100th podium finish in his career. 
This achievement placed him among an elite group of drivers who have scored 100 podiums or more, including Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel, Alain Prost and Ayrton Senna. Alonso's consistency and experience make him a valuable asset to the Aston Martin team as they aim to compete at the highest level in the 2023 Formula 1 season. It's almost a crime that he's only won the championship twice. So what do you think of the Spaniard and his recent performance? Let us know in the comments down below.